Couple things I want to point out. This video is for, uh, it's not a beginner video. I'm not taking you step by step through all the troubleshooting processes I had to do. This is kind of like a video that's a little more advanced for people who have already tried reprogramming, setting the limit switches on this thing, setting the sensitivity on this thing. And every time you're probably coming up with an error flashing seven and one or something to the effect saying that you need to replace the RPM sensor. I've opened this guy up, check some, uh, check some things out. I also checked because other people might have pointed out that the capacitors might be breaking or bulging. And that isn't the case for us. What happened was the tab on the belt broke off, which caused this guy to pretty much be blind. He doesn't know the limits of the stop and go because the limit triangle, every time it triggers the sensor, it's doing a count. So it knows to count till as many of the teeth of the belt it needs till it knows it has to hit close, whatever you programmed it to be, or open whatever you programmed it to be. But if that little tab's missing, you're gonna get what we get. Every time you close, it just keeps driving because it doesn't know where the limit is and it's looking for it. It hits the bottom. The motor itself senses an overdrive condition that is pulling too much voltage or the belt's not moving and probably the motor is driving too hard and immediately comes back up, just like if it hit an obstruction. Then when it comes back to the top, it's looking for the limit for the open, same thing, it never finds it, so it hits, it just bottoms out at the top. Well, not bottoms out, but it just tops out, presses all the way to the end, and stops there. So, as I said, this video is not for the beginner, so, but it does help anybody else troubleshooting and thinking they have a bad RPM sensor, which sometimes flashes, but you don't need to replace it, especially, you know, if it looks like it was working before and for whatever reason doesn't, keep an eye out for that tab, because that tab right there could be what you need replacing. This tab, I bought a pack of five, because it just came in a pack of five, and it cost about $15. So it's a $15 replacement, instead of calling a garage door opener repairman who might recommend changing this whole thing out, replacing the entire belt, all that kind of stuff will get you paying more than what you need. So. Keep in mind, also this video is specific for the Marin Tech M45E. If you get a different brand Marin Tech that uses a chain, this video is not going to help. This video also doesn't help if you have a different garage door opener like a Chamberlain or a LiftMaster. So just keep that in mind. The tab is actually this plastic part. I'll put a little picture up here. And what happened is, I think it broke off. So we're gonna actually replace it with these metal ones that we got off this website called Garage Up. I'll put the website link right here. And we're gonna try to replace it and maybe that will solve the problem. You're gonna put this on the underside of the belt and then there's a second piece that sits on this side. And then you're gonna have this rivet go through both these guys, looks like that with this guy in between here and the rivet going down in between. And this little space between is where the belt sits. So I'm gonna try to install that right now and we're gonna see if this works and solves our problem. For the tab replacement operation, you gotta move the garage door to close, which I have. I'm going to measure about 35 to 38 inches from the end of that motor with the tape measure. And 35 to 38 is gonna be roughly about three feet somewhere here. I'm going to pull the belt out, attach that little replacement tab on, crimp it with this plier to squish the rivet, which is this little guy here. And hopefully uh, that sets it up and then I'll reprogram the Marantech and hopefully that should work. But before you proceed further, as a safety, you should unplug or cut power at the circuit breaker, the garage door opener, because you don't want any surprises. I measured about 36 inches, about three feet, to about right here. Then I have the belt here. I'm going to go ahead and attach the new stop on and then uh, try reprogramming it. This tape's right at 36 inches because you need to be 35 to 38, so it's a pretty good spot. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard for me to show this because I'm doing this by myself, so I'm going to go ahead and crimp this bad boy on and then show you the end result. So here it is. 
That's a little triangle piece. There's the rivet that the crimp down. There's the bottom of that bracket. Here is the belt. And then that is the other side of the bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this down, set at 36 inches away, and let's see what happens. So there is the rivet, compressed like hell. You just need to hold this triangle piece in place to trigger the limits of the Marantech motor sensor. So that's the front side view, those little teeth of the bracket holding between the teeth of the belt. And you go ahead and just carefully drop this guy back in. And that guy will just ride all the way back into the motor and it should register the limits now correctly. Okay, so we replaced the tab and everything actually works really well now. When you press the garage door open, it actually stops instead of bottoming out inside the Marantech, it actually stops where I reprogrammed the limit for the up. And also when it comes all the way down, it stops right at the bottom of the garage where I programmed it as a limit without hitting the bottom and bouncing back up. I had to reprogram this guy, so I did it back to factory resetting, and the settings are pretty much where the limit switches are, and I have my force operating open set at level um, nine, which will be, I think, six flashing, and the force coming down, it's set to actually 11, which is, uh, I guess, uh, I guess six flashing. And then the sensitivity is set at the highest, 15, which is 8 flashing for both the up and down. If that sounds foreign to you, don't worry about it. This, is, uh, this video is mainly for people who have who've been troubleshooting this and they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I also want to point out, yes, you do have to reprogram your transmitter, which will, you know, when you're reprogramming, it's going to go into uh, flash 7 during the reprogramming step. But overall, it works pretty well now. So I'm going to go, go ahead and open it and you're going to see how well it operates. Open. Previously, it'd go past the normal limit, but it actually stops where I put it. And close. Beautiful. So this really helped us out. Total cost of repairs was, I would say, less than $5 because, you know, we bought a pack of these. Comes in a pack of five from Garage, Garage Up or Garage Door Up. I'll put the website here again. And uh, probably about 10 minutes, uh, probably less than 10 minutes of work, but I stopped, took me a little while, 45 minutes, because I was trying to get the right angles and videos to hopefully make this helpful for anybody else watching. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hope this helps.